On this edition of Independent Sources, recent research found that nearly one third of students in grades 9 through 12 reported feeling sad or hopeless almost every day. Persistent sadness and hopelessness are criteria for and predictors of clinical depression, and in some cases, that same feeling can lead to suicide. One New York organization is trying to change that, seeking to use art and self-love as an antidote for hopelessness and encouraging kids to feel enthusiastic about dreaming big. Gary Pierre-Pierre spoke to Laura Barron, co-founder of Arts and Dreams and co-author and illustrator of Rose's Summer of Arts and Dreams. So Laura, talk to us a little bit more about Rose's Summer of Arts and Dreams. Thanks for having me. Uh, Rose's Summer of Arts and Dreams is a story of a nine-year-old girl named Rose in Brooklyn. She wants to be a drummer. She's really creative, but she, she hasn't been feeling really good about herself or her dreams lately. And uh, these are things that I used to feel when I was a child. So she has her Aunt Olive come visit her in Brooklyn, and over a summer, they learn to have fun together. They do creative projects that help boost Rose's self-love and her confidence and she like learns how to use the mirror to speak kind words to herself and she starts to feel better about her life. What made you write such a book? Well, uh, depression and hopelessness are near and dear to my heart. I suffered from those things and I lost my brother. He was 20 years old in the year 2000. He killed himself. Sorry to hear that. Thank you. And um, he was hopeless. That's the word that really struck me that he wrote in his suicide note. And I started healing myself and I started to decide that I was going to feel better about myself because I had spent years of my life prior to that not feeling good about myself. And so I started using art in a hopeful way. I started putting kind words in my art, affirmations. And I, as I started feeling better, I thought, you know, I think this would be helpful for kids and teens everywhere because a lot of people don't learn that in school or at home because we don't know how to do it. We don't know it's important to love yourself. So I started creating workshops called Arts and Dreams, and we help kids love themselves through art. Okay. Well, you know, it's interesting because in looking through the book and reading it, um, one thing that struck me was that uh, you don't often think of kids of having suffering from depression uh, uh, and stuff like that. How common is that? Do you know? I believe it's very common. I can only speak to my experience and the, the children that we've worked with. I think it's something that is not always discussed. It's hard for kids to find a safe place to air those feelings. Like their parents have a lot of pressure. Everybody's kind of trying to get stuff done, put food on the table, and. I think in my experience having those feelings was kind of not okay like let's move on with the daily life and um, why don't you just deal with whatever you're dealing with so I feel like it's pretty common okay so how much is working in this book helped you deal with your issues I think writing this book has helped me to channel my negative feelings into something positive and uplifting and to give tools to kids that they can use. Like they can take out a piece of paper and write down their thoughts and then write down the things that they're grateful for and then hopefully shift their mood. So for me, it's kind of like a teaching tool and it's also like a, an uplifting story of a girl who went through this so the kid doesn't necessarily feel alone and how she helped herself feel better. So tell, talk to us a little bit more about those tools. Yeah. What do you mean by that? Yeah, sure. Like um, affirmations, for example. That's just a big word for a kind, positive, loving statement. Mm -hmm. So in, in my experience, I used to think thoughts. And you mentioned that in a, in a book. Yeah, it's a big it. part of it. It's kind of like taking a really recurring negative thought, like I can't do anything right, I hate myself, and maybe flipping it into the, into the positive. I love myself. I can do whatever I put my mind to. And repeating that habitually and being conscious and being aware of those thoughts and trying to flip them into the positive ones while feeling the negative feelings, not to stuff down the feelings. It's important to feel them and also to try to look to the bright side and consider the bright side. Consider that you're worthy of the bright side. Mm -hmm. So um, is there a movement or uh, is this been applied in the public school systems in the city? We've been to several public schools. We've worked with incarcerated teens in the Bronx at Passages. We've worked with kids after school at, in Brooklyn at the Red Hook Initiative. And it's had a lot of positive results. Just the kids light up and the kids take to these ideas very quickly. And I think they also light up because 
thank you for talking about things that aren't normally talked about. Mm -hmm. uh, is this helping the, chil the, the children much? I feel it is. Our very first workshop we did in Queens with uh, summer school students, and we were warned ahead of time, like one of the students doesn't like art, and he's a little bit rowdy, and he just opened up completely while we were making an affirmation painting where he painted something positive, and he wrote, I can achieve. And we heard afterwards that his grades went up, and you know, I'm not gonna take credit for all of that. <laughs> But it was just like a positive thing just to hear a story of just one child being affected by this. How much is this art? How much is this therapy? Mm, that's a great question. I feel like art, it's art and therapy that go hand in hand. I'm not a trained therapist, but I am. A, I did go to college for art and I studied illustration. And um, so we don't like use the word therapy, but I believe it's therapeutic and it's healing and that's important. And I think empowerment is healing. So it could be considered art therapy, but I, I think it's more of like a fun, creative project that also makes you feel good. Why is it that art is one of the subjects whenever a school district is in financial problems? I know. It's gone. I know. It's, it's, I, I hope movie, that changes. What can be done? What can be done? I think more projects like this. So Arts and Dreams raises money on our website, artsanddreams.org, and the donations are used to fund more workshops for schools that don't have the budget for these types of workshops, and I feel it's very important. So what's next for you? Well, we're going to be doing more readings with the book and scheduling workshops. If you are interested, schools, administrators, and any private lessons or workshops, you can go to our website, artsanddreams.org, and you can sign up, and we're just going to keep going. Where can we get this book? You can get it on our website, artsanddreams.org, or on Amazon, on Barnes & Noble, or at Balboa Press online. Laura Barron, thanks for joining us. Thanks so much. That's our show this week. Thanks for staying tuned. Till next time, be independent-minded.